get thousands of roots and we are so excited for spring. We were uh, getting garden plants together, getting all our uh, soil and things in order and um, just ready to go for it. And then winter came back and uh, it is super, super cold. We're really hopeful that this is gonna be our last cold spurt because we are ready to get going on that garden. So while we're waiting for this cold to go away, um, we thought we'd tackle kind of just the top five challenges that we've experienced gardening in Missouri here in the Ozarks. Um, it is definitely a wonderful place to homestead and you can have some incredible gardens. However, there are some challenges. So I'm going to have the family help me out today and we're going to share just a few of the ways that we are tackling the challenges of gardening in Missouri. This is not going to be extensive or anything in depth. We're just going to kind of quickly hit upon some of the the key things that we've learned so far. So we've been gardening in Missouri for only about five years now. Uh, definitely have a lot more to learn. <laughs> and so we always welcome any kind of tips or comments. Um, interaction in the comments is great. So if you've got some ideas, please share and uh, let's talk about gardening. Okay, back inside where it's warm. So challenge number one that we face here in the Ozarks of Missouri with gardening is poor soil. We've got a lot of rocks in our soil, very little topsoil, and a lot of clay as well. Mm -hmm. And so the way that we're dealing with that challenge is we're building up, um, doing raised beds. And in the past, we've just used free compost and manure from neighbors and friends, and that's worked pretty well for us. This year, we were blessed to be able to get um, some local organic topsoil, which we're going to use for um, creating any new beds that we're building this year. And then we also were able to get some organic compost, yeah. which he spent the whole day yesterday going back and forth from the neighbors to pick up. So uh, that's going to go on top of all of our beds. Yeah. Just a, just a small layer on top of all the beds. Best garden ever. <laughs> that's the hope. Indeed. Challenge number two is too much rain or not enough rain, huh? How mm -hmm. are we dealing with that, Caleb? Well, in our garden and other places, we have a couple little trenches, which someone might need maintenance again. But we have some trenches to help put the water where we want it, and we catch it. Good. At least as much of the time as we can. And we also did do some experimenting with uh, raised garden beds on contour to help capture and soak the water. And that worked great when we just had a really small garden, but now that we've getting now that our garden space is bigger and we're getting multiple garden spaces, it was just a little too challenging to keep everything on contour in and out of apple trees and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. um, but that can be effective too. A uh, way to you make the most of the water, soak it when you get it, um, and then also keep it from flooding, flooding your space. So mm -hmm. a lot of people will do terraces. Um, and that can help with flooding as well. A couple things that we've learned about the excess water as well is that you want to harvest sweet potatoes early if you can yep. before like we get some fall rains and last year we let the fall rains come and then we harvested and our sweet potatoes kind of split. Uh, another thing that you have to watch for is tomatoes. Um, if you get too much rain right around the time you want to harvest your tomatoes they can split as well so um, yeah you just kind of have to get creative with the excess rain, use it the best you can. Um, and then when the drought season comes in the middle of the summer, hopefully you have enough um, to give you what you need to keep things growing. Uh -huh. And that's if you're off grid. If you've got a well and pump and all that, then you can set up all kind of automatic watering systems and, 
and be good to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Nate's gonna help us with challenge number three, which is weeds. We get a lot of weeds here, huh? Mm -hmm. What are we doing to combat, combat the weeds, Nathan? Well, the pathway we put um, old layer food bags down and wood chips on top. Right, nice thick layer of wood chips in the pathways. Then we don't have to weed the pathways at least, huh? Yeah. And if we've got those raised beds full of lots of good yeah, soil and compost, then that keeps yeah. the weeds out of them as well. And we've also done some creative things like put old uh, roofing metal down to smother weeds. <laughs> um, we've used blocks, old blocks to make pathways just for temporary. And another really important thing that we found is just picking all those weeds when they're really tiny in the spring, huh? Yeah, when they're nice and easy. Yeah, when they're nice and easy, huh? When they get big, they're not so easy. Right. So we try and get out there pretty regularly in the early spring season and just pick as many of those little weeds as we can, huh? Yep. Get rid of them when they're easy to get rid of. <laughs> all right, Josh is gonna help us with challenge number four, which is I think our biggest challenge of all, and that is bugs. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. There's so many different things that we could do, but it'd be a full-time job to just spray, and, and we don't like to spray anyway. Even if we use natural sprays, it'd take all day to tackle all the bugs. So what are we doing about the bugs, Josh? Well, we do covers just to cover up the plants so the bugs can't get to them. We also just pick off as many as we can, and we try to attract good bugs that eat the bad bugs, like jumping spiders. Right, and how do we attract the good bugs? Herbs and flowers, and just making sure we don't smush the good bugs. Right. Like spiders, especially jumping spiders, get smushed a lot, even though they don't even bite or anything like that. Right. <laughs> cool. Um, and we have found that crop rotation doesn't really work here, huh? Squash is a big one that we've tried rotating and it didn't really seem to matter, huh? Yeah. The bugs still got the squash. But that's something that might work for some people. Um, timing is another thing. If we can get our brassicas out before the crazy bugs come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Biddle's, Biddle's trying to see you in the camera here. Um, then that can maybe help with the brassicas. They're one of the biggest that get eaten by pests, huh? Yeah. Broccoli and cauliflower and kale. Yeah, the caterpillars love the brassicas. Mama, um, don't so then another, Daddy. yeah, Jashi, huh? Another big thing is just diversity, Daddy. huh? Uh huh. Mix it up. Daddy. Don't put everything all in one spot, but mix things up a bit. Mm -hmm. Lots of herbs and flowers all over. Um, create an environment that kind of confuses the bugs almost, huh? Yeah. A couple other things that can help with the bugs as well is to just get um, bug resistant varieties. Um, we did this specifically with squash last, last year, winter squash. And um, the only problem with that is that we didn't care for the flavor of the winter squash as well as some other types of winter squash. So these were the two main winter squash that we grew last year, the Zucchino Rampocante, which we mostly ate fresh and loved. And it is saving, storing really well, but we don't prefer it cooked as a winter squash. We kind of have to mix some things in it to make it tasty. And the same goes for this one. This is the Pennsylvania Dutch Crookneck. Um, they both were very um, resistant to bugs and we got a lot of them and they store great. But as far as taste goes, <laughs> we, we have to add, you know, some things to them. Well, it makes sense. The bugs like the tasty ones, they don't really like the not tasty ones. <laughs> so this year we want to grow both um, bug resistant varieties for fresh eating and just to have if we need it, but then we want to grow some tastier varieties as well. So this year, we're going to kind of settle in the middle somewhere. We're going to not just do all resistant varieties of winter squash. We're going to try some that um, we're probably going to have to really keep up on the bugs, but they're going to have better flavor. So we'll talk more about that probably in a future video. And then I think one last thing about the bugs, dealing with bugs, is just keeping the garden clean. Um, and this kind of goes against permaculture. Um, in permaculture, you do a lot of chop and drop and um, just put all kinds of things on the, on the ground to help add nutrient and, and biomass to the, to the soil. However, here in Missouri, the bugs are so incredibly bad that just chopping and dropping and leaving a lot of dead leaves and things on the ground creates a habitat for those bugs. So we've been trying to do our best to keep our plants trimmed up, any dead um, leaves down near the ground, keep them trimmed up, keep, up, keep all that off of the ground, keep the ground clean. And this year we're also going to experiment with growing up more, um, sending our plants up trellises um, to hopefully keep it a little bit easier to deal with the bugs as well. 
You guys, are you ready to put all this on our garden? Yes. Yes? <laughs> a great mound of compost. It's still a little hot and stinky, so <laughs> we, we were thinking it was completed compost, but it's still still working. It's steaming. It's steaming. It's steaming. What do you think of this, Jay? It's cool. It's cool. You like playing in the dirt? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Esther Pie Pie, are you excited about gardening this year? Oh yeah. Oh yeah? <laughs> Me too. Alright, back out in the greenhouse here. It was a little too noisy inside. Uh, so, challenge number five, gardening in Missouri, is crazy weather patterns. <laughs> we live in an area where we get weather from all different directions coming at us. Um, all year long and so in the winter time it can get super super cold but it usually doesn't stay cold really long um, it pops back up and then it can even be like spring in January we had this year it was super warm up into the high 60s in the middle of January uh, so you just have to be on your toes you have to be watchful thinking ahead um, and always prepared for anything <laughs> we can get some really heavy winds so any covers that we have out in the garden we have to secure them really well or the wind will just take them out. Uh, we learned this year that with things like garlic or bulbs, flower bulbs, things like that, we need to plant them a bit deeper, otherwise they're gonna be popping up too early. And then there's the potential of another cold spurt like we're having right now coming along and possibly um, killing them as well. So even though the, the uh, weather can be really crazy, there's also a benefit to that. Um, you can make the most of opportunities like warm in the middle of January, or cooling trends in the middle of the summer so that you don't um, get too overwhelmed by the heat of summertime. So we're kind of learning to just go with it and uh, really just make the most of all the opportunities that we that we have of these fluctuating temperatures and um, crazy weather patterns that we get. So those are the five top challenges that we've come across with gardening here in Missouri so far and just a few of the ways that we are tackling those challenges. Um, hopefully it was somehow helpful to, to somebody out there today. And uh, before we close out this vlog, we have some winners to announce. We recently passed 40,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, all of our viewers. And so we were doing a giveaway and we had a few little glitches with that due to the comments being shut down for a time. Uh, but we were able to pick four winners randomly. And so I'm gonna announce them to you right now. Homestead Blessings, Kimberly, David Smith, Betty Rose, and Connie Just My Life. You are the winners. And so if you would each please email us. Um, so we have your email address and we will email you a gift code for that $25 gift card uh, to Baker Creek Heirloom Seats. And so thank you so much for all who participated and um, just for all the ways you bless our family by watching our channel and uh, giving to us in so many ways. We really appreciate you all and we pray blessings over all of you and whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. Got my little greenhouse buddy again. What you doing, bit? Are you digging in the dirt on this cold morning? Woo! <laughs> it's actually fairly warm in the greenhouse even though I think it's only 10 degrees outside. Are you warm in here? You having fun in the greenhouse? Yeah, I'm digging in the dirt. You're digging in the dirt, yes. Dirt is fun to play in, huh?